Now available on Indiegogo is my latest documentary, Here Comes a New Challenger. Celebrating the legacy of the most influential fighting game ever made, Street Fighter 2. The film will explore its development, its cultural impact, its updates with the likes of Champion Edition and Hyper Fighting, the merchandise, the home console releases, the live action movie and more. We are currently in post-production and still have even more interviews to film. If you want to get involved, like having your name in the credits and get yourself a physical copy of the documentary, then follow the link below. Just recently, a new Aliens game arrived on PC, Xbox and PlayStation called Fireteam Elite, developed by Cold Iron Studios and published by Focus Home Interactive. The game lets you join a squad of colonial marines as they battle the xenomorph. Back in the day, licensed video games were all the norm, but nowadays the idea of playing the latest blockbuster film turned into a video game on a modern console is kind of a rarity. But in the case of The Terminator, Predator and Aliens, they seem to have continued having a life on the latest consoles in some form or another, without there being a new film. I really enjoyed Terminator Resistance, Predator Hunting Grounds was fun for about 20 minutes due to the lack of maps, and now we have a new Aliens game, which again gives gamers the chance to play as a Colonial Marine, which has always been a fan favourite. Using a pulse rifle or smart gun, and gunning down waves of aliens is a lot of fun, but with so many alien related games following this direction, it does, in my opinion, become quite stale, but once Alien Isolation hit consoles back in 2014, it was a breath of fresh air. A game focused for a large part on one alien, which many thought would never work, but they were proved wrong. It ended up being one of the best licensed titles in years. It was genuinely scary and tense to play, and the first Alien game to really pull you into that universe. Developers Cold Iron don't follow the approach of isolation and take inspiration from the likes of Gears of War, World War Z and even Left 4 Dead. Most of the alien related games since the days of the Atari Jaguar have been first person shooters, an already oversubscribed genre but this instead has taken on a third person perspective, certainly not original but thankfully a change of direction for an alien game. Though the cover system is rarely used when battling the aliens as the action is too fast and only helpful when combating the androids. From the demos shown online during the early stages of the summer on YouTube, I thought the game looked very interesting and was quite excited to play it. I knew this was somewhat of a budget title, and the game itself is only about 13GB in size, so I wasn't expecting anything epic, but the graphics were certainly pretty impressive, especially during the later stages of the game, with great lighting and detail. Having just finished it, it's certainly not a short experience. It does offer around 6 hours of gameplay from the missions provided. On load up you start out in the hangar where you can interact with a select number of the crew. You can change weapons, upgrade them, change your outfit and select your mission. The story is unfortunately totally forgettable. It has no cutscenes to develop an interesting narrative. The story is explained by interacting with the crew, who oddly don't have their faces animated. You select with a D-pad the choice of conversation. You can dig deeper into the story, but you will find yourself just skipping through the chat to just log off the intel so you can start a mission. So the plot is as follows. In the year 2202, the USS Endeavour receives a distress call from the Katanga Refinery Station orbiting the planet LV-895, and the Marines move in to investigate, sending a fire team to board the station. The Marines quickly discover that the entire station has been overrun by xenomorphs. The first mission you have to rescue Weyland Yutani scientist Dr. Timothy Honaker. Honaker reveals that Weyland Yutani discovered xenomorph eggs on the planet below and have been secretly breeding xenomorphs and conducting experiments with a pathogen on the planet before the xenomorphs broke out. You can select four different classes of marine, gunner, doctor, technician and demolisher, plus recon once you complete the game. In single player you are joined by two androids who are surprisingly very competent when it comes to the combat. Often in this scenario the AI is a total dumbass but thankfully in Fireteam the AI players aren't complete plonkers and make the single player experience not too tough, but this game is really designed for multiplayer. And you can only have a max of three players. With four different loadouts for Marines, having an odd number of players seems strange when most Horde-like games like this do offer four player options. They may have reduced the number to avoid any network issues, who knows. 
The leveling up system, though is a bit of a grind, does offer some nice perks and upgrades. Even though the game throws a variety of weapons at you, the guns you are given from the start are probably the best to use in combat. Just adding an extended mag or scope will suffice. The shotgun as your secondary weapon is brutal and does loads of damage. To my disappointment, the pulse rifle doesn't have its grenade launcher attachment and there is no option to buy one in the game. Maybe I'm missing something, but I couldn't find it. The pulse rifle is supposed to come with one as standard. The game throws a variety of aliens at you. It appears that most of the ones you encounter seem modeled on the one from Alien 3. Face suggers pop up on the last chapter. You come up against mini boss characters, with the common one appearing to be the redesign of the alien from the 1986 sequel. You face up against spitters and exploding xenos that seem inspired from that turd Colonial Marines from 2013. We do encounter the mutated five field from Prometheus in the third chapter once we enter the engineer's ship. Easy to kill, but if they punch you they deliver large amounts of damage. There are other boss characters you encounter that look like the old Kenner action figures, and one creature that goes invisible, which looks like the early concept art from Prometheus. With Weyland Yutani back to its usual evil ways, of course the androids make an appearance and the Joes we saw in isolation. I did laugh when I saw one android charging at me, I thought it was Venom. From the offset, it has a mouse-like icon to navigate through the menus, which made it feel like it was designed for a keyboard and mouse, and seems a weird inclusion on a console. The first mission I was feeling very underwhelmed by the experience. It certainly looked the part and doesn't look cheap and rushed. Care and attention has gone into the level design, but as the story struggles to keep you invested at all, and then facing waves and waves of aliens, it becomes totally mindless, but I was soon finding myself enjoying the game. Once I started the second chapter, where we find ourselves on a planet pretty much identical to the engineer's homeworld in Alien Covenant, I was totally addicted to it, mainly down to the game throwing in some variety in the enemies and a total change of location. The game has that constant horde mode approach, which does make it very repetitive, but if you like this style of game, you won't have any issues with that. Though once a massive attack has been finished, you have these odd few aliens lingering around between each section, which doesn't help with giving a breather between battles, it just becomes an annoyance and destroys the pace of the game. As you go through the maps, you will find hidden away in corners of the room in Tell, which detail more of the story, which you can find out from the crew as you gather more information. Also caches are littered around maps containing extra weapons such as turrets, proximity mines and perks for your character. The score to the game is really strange. There are some musical cues that sound familiar to what Jerry Goldsmith did and even James Horner. It has all the sound effects from the films, but none of the music. Most of the time the score sounds totally inappropriate for an alien game. There are moments where it sounds like Tatooine from Star Wars. Often you experience playful music in the background as you see aliens explode in front of you. It often left me giggling at the absurdity of it all. To be fair, there are flourishes of interesting music, but only for a small percentage of it, and the rest is a total misfire. The developers throwing quick smashes of music to make you jump when an alien leaps at you from the shadows. It works now and again, especially when you're just running forward and not paying attention. But most of the game, the developers attempt to quickly frighten you really fall short in having any effect. Some reviews have reported on a large number of bugs in the game. I didn't experience many glitches with characters clipping through walls or your character acting strange, but most issues surrounded multiplayer and network lag. Sometimes you can't join your friend's game, they have to join yours or vice versa. There was slowdown when taking part in someone else's game or the game locks up for a few seconds. The game did randomly crash for me on occasions and the loading times are really long as well. I didn't have any issues with slowdown in single player, so a patch could easily sort these issues out I imagine. But it did make it frustrating when playing with your friends only after a short while of gaming you encounter lobby issues. I played the game with the difficulty set to standard. Once I got to the last chapter in multiplayer, the game was getting pretty tough, as the boss characters kept spawning and there was a lack of med packs around so me and my friends adjusted the difficulty to casual so we could get to the end and we noticed something. The game takes you in a different direction once you change the difficulty. Once we completed it after getting chased by the Queen Alien, which was basically like a mental roller coaster ride, you unlock the Horde mode and get options for increased difficulty. I will probably go back and play the Horde mode section and perhaps spin through the story again on a harder difficulty to see if there's any change of direction in the maps to find new rooms. 
but I think most people will probably give up on it once they have finished the main missions. Despite some issues with performance, especially network lag with multiplayer, the story being total dribble, the added voiceovers being cheesy and the score being laughable in places, I still had fun with it. Once I put it down I wanted to play it again later on. Something kept drawing me back to it. I suppose the notion of just killing waves of aliens despite being done to death and pure fan service, I can't deny I liked it. It's nowhere in the same league of Alien Isolation, which is in my top 10 list of favourite games of all time. But Fireteam Elite is not trying to be like Isolation, it's all about fast action, and it delivers on that for the most part. But it is a hollow experience however, but I can't deny it's very playable. And if you love the Aliens universe, then I'm sure you'll be tempted to play it like I did, and I think you will be surprised how much fun you will get out of it.